Hello and welcome to my channel, The Grape Jelly Library, where we love to talk about books. My name is Fluff and I am so glad you could join me because I always look forward to your visit. <laughs> Did you know that April is my birthday month? It is. It is. And Although I am on the Read What You Own Challenge, I do make exceptions to the rule. And those exceptions could be, will be, should be, um, my birthday, Mother's Day, my local book fair day. Pretty much, I am good with this challenge. I love reading what I own. I would not have bought these books if I did not want to read them. So I don't have any problem at all reading what I own. But um, yeah, I'm definitely making some exceptions to this rule because I am not gonna miss out on life. I set my goal a little bit too hefty for myself. 50 books, I am on book 22. So I still have a little way to go. Um, you know, books that you have not finished, they count too. And I have quite a stack of those. I should do a video on that, huh? Books that I'm like partially through. If I read those, I, you know, I could get through this challenge. Lickety split, I bet you. But anyways, my birthday month. So I am going birthday shopping with my birthday money at Barnes and Nobles and BAM Books. So when I do that, I will let you know the books that I bought. Ba 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 ba. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> I didn't even plan that. But anyways, let's see the books I bought from Book of the Month for my birthday. I had to do it because do you know why? They give you a free book. So I wasn't going to miss out on a free book. Now, the first book or one of the books I should say that I chose is The Unmaking of a June Farrell, a novel. And it is by Adrian Young. And it looks like this. And let's quickly find out what it's about. A woman risks everything to end her family's centuries-old curse, solve her mother's disappearance, and find love in the mesmerizing novel from the best-selling author of Spells for Forgetting. Okay. I'll let you know when I get to that and what I think of that. The next book that I chose was All We Were Promised by Ashton Lattimore. And it looks like this. This is beautiful. Well, the other one was beautiful too. I think they do some good things with book covers, don't you? The artwork is like out of this world. The paths of three young black women in pre-Civil War Philadelphia unexpectedly and dangerously collide in this debut novel inspired by the explosive history of a divided city. So you know what? I don't think enough books are centered in Philadelphia. I really don't. So that's why I chose this. Um, Philadelphia is beautiful. Philadelphia, 1837, when Charlotte escaped from the crumbling White Oaks plantation down south, she'd expected freedom to feel different from her former life as an enslaved housemaid. After all, Philadelphia is supposed to be the birthplace of American liberty. Instead, she's locked away playing servant to her white passing father as they both attempt to hide their identities from slave catchers who would destroy their new lives. Okay, that's book number two. Book number three, we chose because we're stepping out of our comfort zone and we just love the vibe of this book. It's Annie Bot. Annie Bot. Those of you who subscribe to Book of the Month, have any of you chosen this one? It is by Sierra Greer. All right, Annie Bot was created to be the perfect girlfriend for her human owner, Doug. Yikes. Designed to satisfy his emotional and physical needs. She has dinner ready for him every night. Boo. 
um, wears the cute outfits he orders for her, double boo, and adjusts her libido to suit his moods. True, she's not the greatest at keeping Doug's place spotless, but she's trying to please him. She's trying hard. She's learning too. Doug says he loves that Annie's artificial intelligence makes him seem more like a real woman, but the more human Annie becomes, the less perfectly she behaves. You know what? It's written by a woman from a woman's perspective. So um, we're going to keep an open mind with this one. But so far, not totally on board. I'm going to need some convincing. All right. Now, this one, this author, we are very familiar with as I have read every novel that he has written. Table for two, A More Towel. And I have read my favorite, Gentleman in Moscow, among other novels by him. But Gentleman in Moscow will forever be my favorite so far. I think, like, he really outdid himself in that one. You know, that spotlight on Amor, Amor, um, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So much so I bought several copies of that book and passed it around. Okay, from the best-selling author of The Lincoln Highway, which I read, A Gentleman in Moscow and Rules of Civility, yep, read all three, a richly detailed and sharply drawn collection of stories, including a novella featuring one of his most beloved characters. Oh, I wonder who that character is going to be. Millions of Amor Towels fans are in for a treat as he shares some of his shorter fiction, six stories based in New York City and a novella set in Golden Age Hollywood. The New York stories, most of which take place around the year 2000, consider the fateful consequences that can spring from brief encounters and the delicate mechanics of compromise that operate at the heart of modern marriages. In Cowell's novel, Rules of Civility, the indomitable Evelyn Ross leaves New York City in September 1938 with the intention of returning home to Indiana. But as her train pulls into Chicago, where her parents are waiting, she instead extends her ticket to Los Angeles. Told from seven points of view, Eve in Hollywood describes how Eve crafts a new future for herself and others in a nourish tale that takes us through the movie sets, bungalows, and dive bars of Los Angeles. Woo! Yeah, I think I'm going to have fun with this. I think that, like, I'm getting vibes like each story, they say treat. So each story is going to be like a cupcake, you know? I'm just going to just eat them all up. Just del delicious stories. I know it because I am a big fan of his work. So I do not think that he will let me down. The next book that we are looking at is a beaut, a beaut. Dragon Fruit by Machia Lucier. Every wish demands a price. Look at that stunner. That is a stole cult stunner. Um, I think that's a little bat. Is that a bat? A bat? I don't want to show my nail because I chipped it. <laughs> I was working hard around this house. But anyways, I think that's a bat, right? Yeah, he's a cutie. Um, Okay, dragon fruit. Let's see. In the old tales, it is written that the egg of a, a sea dragon, dragon fruit, holds within it the power to undo a person's greatest sorrow. But as with all things that offer hope when hope has gone, the tale comes with a warning. Every wish demands a price. There it is. Okay. Um, I do not know. Hanale of Tamarind is the cherished daughter of an old island family. But when her father steals a sea dragon egg meant for an ailing princess, she is forced into a life of exile. In the years that follow, Hanale finds solace in studying the majestic sea dragons that roam the Nominami Sea. Until one day, an encounter with a female dragon offers her what she desires most, a chance to return home and to right a terrible 
wrong. Okay. So I will let you know. I will keep you posted. And the last book that I chose, I don't know. I'm hoping it's a cute one. It's by Holly Gramazio and it is called Husbands. Husbands. Let's see. Do you take this man? No. What about this one? When Lauren returns home to her flat in London late one night, she is greeted at the door by her husband, Michael. There's only one problem. She's not married. She's never seen this man before in her life. But according to her friends, her much improved decor and the photos on her phone, they've been together for years. As Lauren tries to puzzle out how she could be married to someone she can't remember meeting, Michael goes to the attic to change a light bulb and abruptly disappears. In his place, a new man emerges and a new slightly altered life reforms around her. Realizing that her attic is creating an infinite supply of husbands, hell yes, <laughs> Lauren confronts the question, if swapping lives is as easy as changing a light bulb, how do you know you've taken the right path? When do you stop trying to do better and start actually living? A thrillingly original debut, The Husbands brilliantly explores how we navigate life, love, and choice in a world of never-ending options. All right, so I think this is going to be a fun one. So there you have it, six book of the month books that I think will keep me busy for quite some time. Thank you for sharing my birthday books from book of the month and join me next time as I share with you my birthday books book haul. Until we meet again, know that I love you. Be well, be good, and be reading, and may all your dreams come true.